And I know you've you've done some research about the impact of of the pandemic. You know, will the could the pandemic act as a, a something that might change that and we start to invest more in the people in the yeah. organization we start to see some of the results so right. you've done you've done some research around the the the, the impact of the, the pandemic and particularly on the on the changes on the way people think about work you know what has your research shown on how people's perception you know as well as their priorities and their values have, have changed in the last two years well, you know, I think on that topic, um, it, it, particularly in the U.S. and to some extent in all the common law countries, um, you know, the employers have most of the say over what's going on. So unless they can see right in their face the problems, um, they tend not to pay attention to them. Uh, and governments are not going to intervene and, and do much about them. So, so the question about, you know, the pandemic and particularly working from home in an office context, which many employees say they like, is to say, well, how does this help the employer? Uh, and so far, what we have seen is there's an enormous amount of interest in this in the press. And the interest, not surprising, is always on the extreme end. And the extreme end is people who um, want to work permanently remote and move to Portugal and work from a small village there. And isn't this cute and everybody wants to do this, right? Well, and it turns out that actually most people don't want to do that. Um, even though that one, at least from the employer's perspective, the CFOs like that idea because they're going to take your office away, right? And save on real estate costs and they can see immediately why that might save them some upfront money, but actually not very many people want to do that, right? The problem is on the employer side, um, they seem disproportionately to want to go bring people back to the office and at least in the u.s maybe you're hearing this elsewhere now too the last couple of weeks we've heard more and more stories like that and more and more poll results saying that employers want to bring everybody back right so the question is if you're not going to do that if you want to keep people working remotely or some sort of in-between hybrid model how does that help the employers because if it doesn't help them, uh, then it's not going to happen, frankly. They're not going to do anything just because employees want it, right? Unless there's a payoff. You know, employees want lots of things we just never get. We want higher pay, we don't get that, you know, all kinds of things. So why would we expect to get this? And, uh, you know, the problem is the employers at the top, the leaders, are not disposed to think about how this might work for them so they're not inclined to do it right and i think we're starting to see now people heading back trying to bring more people back to the office on a permanent basis so you know has it changed the way employees think about work um there's very little evidence that people are quitting their jobs and moving to tibet and becoming buddhists you know i mean it's just that's not what's going on they're quitting this job and moving to another job yeah. and the reason they're all doing that now is frankly because they can Right. Um, you know, you see these surveys saying, you know, a third of workers say they'll quit unless they get blah, blah, blah. They say that all the time. There's nothing new about those surveys. They've always said that. The problem is <clears throat> they don't quit. And the correlation between saying you're going to quit, intentions of quit, to quit, what the psychologists call this, and actual quitting is just a couple of percent. So almost nobody who says they quit actually quit. And the main reason, as we know, is quitting is hard. It's easy to say, I want to quit. It's difficult to do it. And the main reason why it's difficult to do it is you have to have another job. Okay. And unless somebody's offering you one, you don't quit. So we've known this forever, right? As soon as the unemployment rate drops, the quit rate goes up because there are more jobs when the unemployment rate is low and more people can quit. So they do, right? I think the one thing which is different is that for people who have been working remotely, um, social ties have frayed and one of the main factors that retains people in organizations in all kinds of organizations are social ties and particularly ties with supervisors and my immediate peers and if it's been two years since i've seen those people i don't feel particularly close to them or particularly tied to them and especially if somebody offers me a job where i can just stay remote and all I have to do is change my IP address. 
now it's pretty easy for me to move, right? So that's the main thing which has happened is it's a lot easier to move. There are more jobs. The labor market at least is tight, at least in some places, not everywhere. And actually quit rate is not up everywhere. It's only certain industries, but it's also easier to let go because there's not very much holding me anymore. So yeah. I'd say that's the one thing which is different. Our employers responding to that, um, I'd say they were at the beginning, um, but I think a little bit they did that at the beginning because it sounded like everybody else was doing it. They're all waiting to see what everybody else is doing. But you can already see the industry patterns forming, right? Banking has said in New York, everybody back. And in California, Silicon Valley, they were saying, fine, go work from home. But now they're walking that back in Silicon Valley. They're walking it back by charging you basically a penalty on your compensation if you want to work remotely. They were saying, well, we're going to cut your pay. And they don't say it that way, right? They say, well, we're going to pay you based on the labor market where you're living, uh, knowing that nowhere else is the labor market higher than where they are, or the cost of living where you're going to move, and which no one's ever thought about doing that before. You know, they never looked at the zip code where your house is in Silicon Valley and pricing your compensation based on that. Their cost of living difference is already pretty big. So I always tell my friends who were there, just tell them you want to move to Hong Kong where the cost of living is 30% higher than Silicon Valley and see if they give you a pay raise. You know, they, they don't mean it. That's not where they're doing it, right? So, so I think even in Silicon Valley, they're walking this back. Uh, and the other thing which is not so well known is that the tech firms who were big on pushing remote work are also buying commercial real estate like crazy during the pandemic. They're the single biggest purchasers of long-term office space. So what's going on there? It doesn't sound like they're moving toward a permanently remote world, you know. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.